Today we're going to talk about air masses, pressure, and how they contribute to weather on Earth. First of all, you need to know what an air mass is. An air mass is a body of air with common characteristics, um, characteristics such as temperature, moisture, and pressure. Air masses take on or adopt the characteristics of Earth's surface where they originate. And remember, the origin of something is the beginning of it. So to originate means to begin. So here's an example. We have a drawing of Earth here. The green represents the continents. The blue represents the oceans. And then we have some latitude markings. So we know zero degrees latitude is the equator, 25 degrees north, 60 degrees north, and 25 degrees south. Um, here's a key to let us know how scientists would indicate these things about air masses. So a capital P means it's a polar air mass, which means it's at 60 degrees north or south or higher, between 60 and 180. Um, a tropical air mass originates between 25 degrees south and 25 degrees north, so in this equatorial region on Earth right here, and that's indicated with a capital T. A continental air mass just means that it forms over a continent or forms over land. It's indicated with a lowercase c. And a maritime air mass means that it originates or forms over an ocean. It's indicated with a lowercase m. Um, so an example for letter A, if an air mass formed right here, you would see that it's tropical because it's forming between 25 degrees south and 25 degrees north, so it's in a tropical area. And you would see that it's maritime because it's forming over the ocean. So you would describe it using capital T for tropical, lowercase m for maritime. Example B is here. If an air mass formed here, you see it's forming over land and it's forming in a polar region um, north of 60 degrees north in latitude. Um, so if you're describing it, you would use a capital P to indicate that it's polar and a lowercase c to indicate that it formed over a continent. It's continental. All right, so that brings us to what is wind. Well, wind is the movement of air from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. Um, a reminder that warm air is less dense than cold air. That's why warm air rises. It's not as heavy as the cold air, so it rises up, and then dense cold air rushes in to take its place. Um, on a map, meteorologists use isobars to indicate air pressure. Um, so for instance, if these are isobars, everything along this 10 would have a pressure of 10. Um, everything along this circle would have an air pressure of 20. Um, if isobars are closer together on a map, like here, that indicates that there's a big change in pressure over a small area. So over this area of land, you have a change in pressure of 20. Okay? That means it's very windy. Air is moving really quickly from the higher pressure areas, like 30, to the lower pressure areas, like 10. So this is actually showing you there's a low pressure system in the middle of this circle. If they're spaced further apart, then it's not windy, it's calm or fair. The air will still move from the high pressure of 30 toward the low pressure, but it's moving less quickly. You know that because they're spaced further apart. So it's taking more time for the air to move from one pressure measurement to the next. All right, so one easy example of wind is to look at land and sea breezes. These occur along the coast near the ocean. So during the daytime, we know that land, sand specifically, has a lower specific heat than water. It takes less heat to heat up sand to the same temperature than it takes to heat up water. Because it has a lower specific heat, the land heats up more quickly than the water does. And so the air over the land, because of conduction, also heats up more quickly. And through conviction, convection, it starts to rise. When that warm air over the land rises, the cool, dense air over the ocean rushes in to take its place. And that creates a constant breeze from the ocean 
to the land during the daytime as that cool air rushes in to take the place of the warm air that rose above the land. At nighttime, at the beach or at the coast, this process reverses, okay? So at night, you know, water has a higher specific heat than land does, so it takes it longer to cool off. It will stay warm longer. So after the sun goes down, the land has already cooled off, the water is warmer, the air above the water will warm because of conduction and rise because of convection. As that air over the water rises, the cooler, denser air over the land rushes in to take its place. And that rushing creates a constant breeze from the land to the ocean. It has reversed. Something you need to be familiar with are the global patterns of wind on Earth. So here's a diagram of Earth that begins to explain these wind patterns. Um, one thing to know is that in the northern hemisphere, air always rotates toward the right from its origin. So if you look at these examples, the origin is the base of the arrow, and it always goes to the right if you're facing its origin. So facing its origin here, it's turning toward the right. You also know from the previous that air always moves from high pressure areas to low pressure areas, all right? So that means that from the North Pole to about 60 degrees north latitude, we have consistent winds that blow um, called the polar easterlies. Winds are always named for the direction they blow from or the direction of their origin. The high pressure area around 30 degrees north, we have winds blowing toward the low pressure at 60 degrees north. Those are called westerlies. See, they're turning right from their origin, but they're origi originating in the west. Okay. Then we have trade winds. All right. Between 30 degrees north and the equator, those are called northeast trades because they originate in the northeast part, um, and they blow toward the low pressure center at the equator. In the southern hemisphere, it's reversed. You have the same type of winds, but they blow in opposite directions. So southeast trades start in the southeast area, blow toward the low pressure center at the equator. Your westerlies still start at 30 degrees south, okay, but originate in the west and blow toward the low pressure center at 60 degrees south. And your polar easterlies still start at the high pressure center near the poles. They originate in the east and they blow toward the low pressure center at 60 degrees south, okay? Notice that in each of these areas, the air is moving from the high pressure center to the low pressure center. Um, that's what these arrows represent. So along Earth's surface, air is rushing from the high pressure center at the north to the low pressure center at 60 degrees north, right? And that's what this arrow indicates. Then the low pressure air had risen up and it's drifting back toward the high pressure center. That creates cells, vertical cells of wind. Okay, and those vertical cells, that circular movement, is called a convection cell. Air moves from high pressure areas on Earth's surface to low pressure areas on Earth's surface. Okay. Um, I mentioned that in the northern hemisphere, air is always rotating toward the right. In the southern hemisphere, air is always rotating toward the left from its origin. That is due to the Coriolis effect. So the Coriolis effect is this rotational effect due to, to the Earth's rotation that causes things to veer right in the northern hemisphere and to veer left in the southern hemisphere. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about high pressure versus low pressure systems and how they affect the weather. Okay? So a high pressure system is indicated on a weather map with a capital H inside a circle, and often you'll see them in the color red. Weather associated with the high pressure system is going to be sunny, dry, and fair. It's very pleasant weather. If you have a high pressure system and the air starts to rotate around the high pressure system, it will rotate away from the high pressure, right? Air always wants to spread out, so it's too packed in, it's too dense in the high pressure center, it's moving away, it's leaving that high pressure system. 
It's moving away. As it moves away in the northern hemisphere, it's going to veer right because of the Coriolis effect. And so you get a clockwise spinning, and that's called an anticyclone. Now, an anticyclone sounds like bad weather to us because it has this word cyclone in it, but it actually is very fair weather. It's sunny, dry, pleasant weather, but it is air that's rotating gradually around this high-pressure system. The opposite of a high-pressure system is a low-pressure system. Okay. Um, usually, weather associated with low-pressure systems is cloudy, humid, stormy, and there's a lot of precipitation. Um, Low-pressure systems a lot of times bring things like thunderstorms um, or even more severe storms. If the air starts to rotate around a low-pressure system, we call that a cyclone. Now, you might hear the word cyclone and automatically think of a tornado or a hurricane, but it's not necessarily that severe. Cyclone can describe any weather pattern where the air is rotating around a low-pressure system. Because there's low pressure at the center of the system, air is moving into that system. It's higher pressure out here. The air wants to spread out, so it's rushing into the center of the system. Because we're in the northern hemisphere, it's also going to rotate a little bit, this time, to the right. Um, and it's going to rotate counterclockwise. Um, so you have this counterclockwise motion in the northern hemisphere around a low pressure system. That's called a cyclone. Um, cyclones often form from an occluded front. So a cold front um, catches up to a warm front. They combine. And so you have very heavy precipitation rotating around a low pressure system. And that can result in severe weather. Cyclones that form over tropical oceans, meaning oceans between 25 degrees south and 25 degrees north latitude, are called tropical cyclones. Um, tropical cyclones gain a lot of energy from the heat in the ocean. The moisture and the heat drive that storm and it, becomes, it begins to rotate faster and faster and faster. And if it stays over warm water long enough to gain more momentum, it might eventually become a hurricane. This has been an overview of pressure systems and fronts. Thank you for your attention.